Hello everyone, here's another Physics 30 uh, example lesson. Um, this one is lesson 7 from unit 2. So we're looking at electric forces and fields and this one is beginning to introduce uh, the Millikan's experiment. So without going into detail about the experiment itself, hopefully you'll recall from class that essentially with the Millikan's oil drop experiment, it, for our intents and purposes, we treat it like uh, a sort of macroscopic or microscopic object, and therefore the force of gravity is in play. We consider the force of gravity, uh, unlike other examples where we have electrons or alpha particles within magnetic or electric fields, subatomic or yeah, very, very small subatomic particles like electrons, the, the, the effect of gravity is so insignificant when compared to the electric and magnetic forces that we ignore gravity. In Millikan's experiment, we do not ignore gravity. We need to think about it. In fact, it helps us solve the problem. So the problem in this example, this is example one, we've just got two to do in this, uh, in this video. We have a suspended oil drop. So here it is, this is the oil drop, and we know the mass of the oil drop. The question is just how many electrons are on the oil drop? How many are on it, or how many does it is it in deficit of? So let's think about, again, first of all, we need to think about that electric field. The large side of the battery means that we have positives at the top, and that's most common in Millikan oil drop experiments. You'll see why in a second. So there's the oil drop, and of course we're going to go ahead and assume that gravity is down. So there's going to be a force of gravity this way. Can we figure that out? Yes, we can, because we know the mass. And of course, the force of gravity is mg. Now, the key with this is figuring out what physics principle is in play. And the, the, uh, the clue here is that it's suspended. It's suspended, which means we're interested in physics principle, so physics principle zero from the data sheet. And that means that there is, uh, there is a balanced set of forces. There's, uh, there's no acceleration. And in this case, there's also no uniform motion. Um, in terms of the physics principle, there's no difference between a stationary object and an object that is in uniform motion or uniform velocity. Uh, but in our case, what it does mean is that we have balanced forces, and that means there must be a force equal and opposite to the force of gravity. Can you see what it is? Hopefully you can. It's going to be the electric force, isn't it? The force electric. So right away we can see here that we can make a statement. We can say just by looking at our four free body diagram, we can say that the Fe is equal to Fg. Of course, if we wanted to be proper, we would do an F net expression, um, sum of all forces, uh, da, da, da. but the F net is going to be zero because the acceleration is zero, which means, so we can say, therefore, F1 must equal F2. And in this case, it's Fg and Fe. So we kind of get to the same solution just by looking at an F net that we do by looking at a free body diagram. Okay, so what are the, well, let, let's, let's go ahead and put uh, the force of gravity in. The force of gravity is mg, and we know what the m is. It is 5.76 times 10 to the negative 16 kilograms multiplied by, I'm just going to make some space here, Let's get rid of some of this stuff. Okay, so that's obviously multiplied by gravity, which is 9.9.81 meters per second squared. So 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, and then the force electric. Well, again, looking at your data sheets, hopefully you can start to recall now that the force electric is the electric field multiplied by the charge. And if we think about electric field for a second, this is very important in physics 30. Electric field is going to be the force over Q. 
But it's also, and this is the key, there's another set of units we can use for the electric field, and that is voltage over distance. Okay, so then we're going to use that. We're going to use voltage over distance because that's what we have in the question. So let's substitute voltage over distance for E. Okay, so these, these are equivalent, okay, because we've said that in our equation. So do I know the distance? Yes, I do. It's going to be these added together. And do I know the, char uh, the voltage? Yes, there it is. So algebraically, I can say, I'm just going to go back to my algebra, I can say that the, the Q is equal to mg, sorry about that, I've just gone back to, back to mg, uh, just so that we can see it algebraically, mgd, okay, I'm just multiplying by the d, divided by the voltage. And so that gives me a charge, if I was to go ahead and work that out, keeping all the decimals in my calculator, 7.99, Seven, seven, something, 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 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now, I need to know how many electrons there are and whether they're in excess or deficit. So let's first of all think about this. If, if, the, if the oil drop experience is a force electric towards the positive, that must mean, because opposites attract, that must mean that it's it's got a net negative charge, which means it's going to have an excess, isn't it? It's going to have an excess of electrons. The question is by how many? Well, we know that, let's think about this too, we know that one electron has a charge of 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So I'm going to use the unit analysis here to get rid of this and give me, rather than coulombs, I'm going to have electrons. So I'm going to say I want my coulombs to be cancelled. So these coulombs are going to cancel out, and I'm going to have electron on the top. So I'm going to say one electron is equal to 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. In other words, one, one electron... That's the charge of one electron. The coulombs cancel out, and I'm left with, I'm left with electrons. If I go ahead and do this, this, uh, this sum, in other words, dividing, and if I do that, I get a charge. Actually, I don't get a charge. My charge is a. Let me rephrase that. I'm not getting a charge. I'm just getting a number of electrons. So a number, which is four decimal nine, nine, eight something something. Now. Can I have half an electron? No. As far as we know, the electron is a fundamental particle. Um, we can only have integer numbers of them. So that means I can... I obviously, I round this up. I'm going to say there are five electrons in excess. All right, so example number two. Um, here we have similar situation. Uh, we have an oil drop. We know the mass of the oil drop. This time, rather than working out the number of electrons on the oil drop or the number of excess or deficit electrons on the oil drop, we're actually told that information. So we are told that it has a four elementary charge deficit. And now we need to figure out the acceleration, assuming that there's no air resistance. So let's do a little bit of thinking on where fields are at and uh, where the charges are going to be and the forces are going to be. Um, as normal with a Millikan's oil drop experiment, we have the positives at the top. It doesn't always have to be that way, but it's pretty normal because we tend to talk about uh, balanced charges. Uh, but in this case, it's, we, we don't have that. We're going to have something slightly different, as you'll see. Uh, next thing to think about then is the charge. Well, this is my oil drop. Um, well, let's go ahead and put the force of gravity on. The force of gravity is going to be going down, as usual. But this time, we're told that it has a, a four-electron deficit. So that means it's lacking some electrons. And if it's lacking electrons, that means it's going to be... It's going to have a net positive charge. Okay, and 
opposites attract. So this positive charge, this positively charged oil drop is not only going to experience the force of gravity downwards, it's also going to experience the force electric downwards. So both of these forces are in the downward direction. So then if I was to do an F net expression, okay, I'm going to say the net forces on the oil drop is the sum of all forces. We don't have to worry about air resistance. So these, these two forces here, the force electric and the force of gravity, these are the only forces I'm interested in. Um, it could be possible to apply air resistance to this as well, but we're not going to in this case. So the, the, the net force here is going to give me an acceleration. It's a non-zero acceleration. So this is this is physics principle. This is physics principle one, which is that the F net is non-zero. So that's the physics principle we're dealing with here, which is why we can put this acceleration uh, factor in here. And so now we have to think about the two forces. Well, the two forces are going to be F G and F E. Now, normally I'd be really concerned about positives and negatives, but I'm just going to go ahead and assume that downwards is positive because everything's downwards. The acceleration's downwards. All of the forces are downwards. So I'm going to say this is a positive direction. This is a negative direction. That way I don't have to put negatives on everything. Okay, because normally I'd say that down is negative, but since they're all in the same direction, I'm just going to go ahead and say they're all positive. Um, but I'm going to bear that in mind when I state my uh, magnitude and direction of the acceleration at the end. OK, so hopefully you can see that we're nearly there. Um, there's the acceleration that I need to find. Now I just have to make sure I've got all my values in here. So mg is going to be my fg. And then, of course, eq is the electric field times q. But remember that... Uh, so let's do this m. G plus, remember that electric field can either be Fe over Q or voltage over distance. Guess which one I'm going to use? That's right, voltage over distance, because there are my two values. So I'm going to substitute Vd in for Q, and that gives me this uh, equation. And then because I've got an, an addition in there, I'm going to make sure that I do my calculations inside the brackets first. And that gives me my acceleration, um, which would be mg. Oops, let's just make a bit of space there. Plus voltage over distance q. And then, of course, the whole thing, which I would again do in brackets, divided by the mass of the oil drop. So that gives me an acceleration. Um, if you plug in all your numbers correctly, you will get an acceleration of one decimal two six. I think that's right for significant digits. Yes, times ten to the one meters per second squared. And remember, I've got to keep track of the direction. Well, this is going to be down. 